Here we go. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Hello, hello. How are you? It's okay. I mean, you know. Uh, so, uh, it's okay. They've started and stuff. So, we'll just catch up eventually and it'll be fine. So, there's no need to worry about it. Um, is Alice gone down? Okay. We're live, by the way. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, are we on... Uh, are we live on YouTube, on, on stream? I've just started it with the streaming soon. Uh, uh, oh, fantastic. Yeah, so hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, they can hear us. You didn't even give me a chance to. Uh, yeah, sorry. I can stop and we can do it again. Well, no, because, well, is there anybody actually there? Cause... No, no, no. But they'll watch yeah, the VOD back and this will be a little Easter egg for them. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, you're not streaming in Discord though, so I can't see. Yeah, no, I'm just um, going in. Oh, you haven't even opened client yet? No, I'm just loading up the game. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna post in the Discord that we are um, going live. Please. How are you, Mr. Rescue? Nobody cares about us poor streaming commentators. No. <laughs> no, but obviously we know that Chivite... Oh, come on with this camera. Chivite uh, will play his Blood Bowl whenever he can play his Blood Bowl. <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, it's always going to be tough, isn't it? So I'm, I've got the new new setup with what with um, with the streaming. Yeah, he was just warning you that they were going live. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, was not was not free to look at my phone alerts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, new setup um, might need to. I'm keeping an eye on the levels. It seems to be fairly good. Chat will tell us if one of us is. Oh, hang on. <laughs> this would help. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a game. Um, okay. So we're. Would you mind rewinding back to the start? Let's so that we do can that. Catch up on everything? Let's do that. Thank you so oh. much. Getting spoiled for turn three. Yeah. <laughs> a little. Okay. So it's. Um, it's hard to tell with the rewinding back if this is Chivita setting up for his defense. Mm. Probably. I mean, this is not set up, is it? Or maybe it is. Uh, it is. It is set up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he is set up. That's, so that's the defense set up. Uh, Chivita is in defense. Uh, or he's, I know, I like... th no, that was him setting his... Oh, I hasn't even... Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Don't know what's going. On. Professional casters. <laughs> well, look, I was meant to be doing this in twenty minutes' time and being ready for it. I'm, oh, I, know, I, know. I know. I am entirely not okay, ready. It's funny. It's funny. Nobody cares. Uh, right. So I'm going to I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you on your own for five minutes. Oh, sure. Okay, <laughs> okay. cool. Once it's now that I've got it set up because I'm not actually yeah. free yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll no back problem. soon. Bye bye. Uh, hello, Chash. How's it going? I uh, hope we have a couple of people here. Uh, Kaylon G here. Uh, watching the game and uh, you'll have to accept our apologies for this being a little bit rushed we weren't expecting the game to go off for another half an hour but uh, Shibine having a small child meant that uh, his window of opportunity presented itself and thankfully um, Panatos was able to jump in game as well uh, so here we are we find ourselves in the round one of the cup for the Air Bubble League um, with Chivile, uh, the winner of Division 1 and the uh, cup winner from Division uh, from Season 1. And his necromantic 
up against um, Anatos, uh, who is new to the league, certainly not new to Blood Bowl, um, and his union of redundant union, Elven Union. Uh, Anatos has uh, qualified from uh, his second place uh, finish in Division 3 this season. Okay, uh, Sylvan, if you're still there, would you be able to put the skills on, please? So, uh, we have got inducements in this game, quite a considerable amount of inducements, I should point out, uh, with the um, uh, Elven Union being seriously down, um, them being only a one-season-old team and Shigiris being two, uh, he was down uh, quite a substantial amount of money. Uh, for his inducements, he has opted for um, Eldril's Sidewinder, you can see there in the middle of the pitch. Um, Eldril being an absolute beast of a uh, lad with his... Uh, oh, and straight away he goes in with his uh, hypnotic gaze, getting rid of the guard. What an absolutely fantastic play to open up. Uh, that flesh golem on the... Uh, no longer counting as being there with the cool icon over his head. Um, he also has a wizard in hand, um, and he also has Jordel Fresh Breeze. Uh, uh, might actually not have taken a wizard, I believe, just to looking at it now. There doesn't seem to be any gap there, so maybe he didn't go for the wizard. Uh, we'll see when Sylvan gets back whether there are some other uh, skills in there. Uh, gets the pick up. Pretty nice and pretty straightforward uh, opening thing here. He has gone straight in for the foul on the Flesh Golem. That is very rowdy, and I absolutely love it. Does not get any payment for it. Jordel manages to come up and uh, keep some pace in the back. Um, so, this is a very, very aggressive opening turn. And I am all about that opening turn. That was a beautiful uh, worked foul um, on the Flesh Golem over there. Uh, block coming in handy and the opening hit. Uh, wanted to get that guy back up and running. Brought the guy in for the assist and got the hit on Eldril. Eldril's armor managing to hold up. Blitz about to come in uh, to be able to crush through that cage. And maybe it could have been a bit of a mistake by um, deciding to press so far down on the right hand side of the pitch that um, the elves have uh, overextended themselves somewhat. I mean, they're mostly moves seven and eight. So probably not extending themselves that far. But there is a lot of pressure coming forward. Foul does come in with the dirty player on Eldril. Is an injury. Does get caught. He uses a bribe. Uh, I'm not sure where he used the bribe from. Uh, must have been from the kickoff. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, wow. And Eldril gone. There goes 200k of inducements for a 100k bribe. And I think Shivira is definitely going to be quite glad about the outcome of that. Always going to be an issue when you decide to use Eldril like that. But wow. That was uh, that was certainly very, very impressive. And Blitz coming in from the agility 5. Um, Blitzer does get a stun on this zombie. Probably will have to follow up if he wants any more attacks. He does not follow up. Instead, opts to just go into the cage there, go further to the sideline there and see if he can cage off some. So it is a functional cage. Manages to get out and away from most of the, um, the uh, necromantic. Uh, here we come with the loner hit onto the uh, guard white. We do have a failed dodge. I'm going to reroll that. First failed dodge. Not too bad for it to be the last action on turn two for the elves. And three, I beg your pardon. So quite a sizable um, equity shift there coming in from the loss of Eldritch Sidewinder. Amount of restabilization did come in. I think should be nice kind of fine with this. It does look like the elves are quite willing to just push down that that, that, that right hand side and score very early. I think that's fine. Um, I think I think it's quite likely that uh, Shavita will be fine with that. I'm happy to let him go through and get some stuff. Um, we have another injury coming in. It's an MNG. It's on a loner. He's not going to have all that. That does not matter. But it does indeed cap the elves uh, to, uh, well, they're after losing another player. Did have 11 plus the two star players. Of course, one of the star players is gone. And one of the linemen is feeling, or the marked linemen is gone. So that does cap the elves at 11 for the rest of the game. 
playing pro elves, getting capped at 11 is absolutely fine. It happening on turn three, maybe not ideal, but nevertheless, this is all around. Opens with the nice dodge elf from the uh, lone elf there. Goes around the corner to do some stuff. Curious as to how far he decides he actually wants to bring this down. Uh, Eldril or uh, Jordel Freshbreeze holding up the back corner of that cage is pretty enticing. Versus the side of the cage being held, there are going to be some dodges rolled here. Uh, whether he likes it or not, he's going to have to roll those two pluses. Um, one of them being on the downed uh, guard, on the downed uh, loner lineman. Okay, decides to cheat a corner there, which is pretty interesting. See if he can come around here. Gets the push. I'm not sure that's really doing much for him, to be quite honest with you. Gets the re-roll off him. Does manage to get it. This is obviously target number one. Oh, and we have a KO on Clyde. That is the mighty blow piling on. Tackle Blitzer removed from the game. Uh, Sylvan, while you're there, can you hit uh, the controls so that we can um, see the... Skills, please. Thank you very much. Yay! So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Mighty Blow Tackle uh, Blitzer removed, uh, which is pretty exciting. <clears throat> just for the turn, though, or just for the just for a little while, um, we do, he does have the 4 plus uh, KO roll to take at the end of the drive. And that drive doesn't look like it's going to be lasting a huge amount of time either. Um, the elves, I mean, they've managed to get some removals of their own, not quite as huge a removal as the Eldral Sidewinder was, but uh, going to be pressed to manage to get a huge amount of space out of this. So, how do they decide to proceed? How far they decide to come down the pitch is going to be the next big question. That is a Agility 4 Mighty Blow Tackle, or Mighty Blow uh, Wolf, uh, which is pretty scary regardless of what you are, but Majority of the Pro Elves are Armour 7. I don't think he cares that much about it. it the Claw isn't as big a deal as the Mighty Blow is. And it's just making a lot more sense now that we can see more of the skills. Um, going to be curious to see how much of a, how safe he can get Jordel here. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about the camera flying everywhere. That's okay. the usual nightmare yeah. client while I'm multitasking. Yeah, the game seems to have frozen as soon as you came back into the... Uh Oh, there we go. Yeah. Back again. Would you mind uh, hovering over Jordel Fresh Beast, the guy with the star, I, the star yeah, player who just moved? So, I, <laughs> I tried, I've tried to put the... Oh, my God. I've tried to put the game a little smaller resolution. I oh, yeah. It's, it's in window on my screen. Mm -hmm. This is a bad mm. idea. This has turned mm -hmm. out a bad idea. <laughs> it's a terrible idea because as soon as your mouse isn't on the screen, it uh, goes off in weird directions. Well, I wasn't expecting it so, to do that if I out Yeah. But it did, but it does. It does, yeah. Because of does. cyanide. You don't think it'd do that, but it did. <laughs> so, uh, the quick way to go around it while you have it in this uh, capacity is to use the real keys to go around the pitch instead of using the mouse. But it will uh, make it um, different. Uh, please don't check. I, yeah, I, it is the other way around. Uh, yeah, just leave it alone. <laughs> Thanks. Because I'll get confused because I've been talking about the right and the left all the way through the game so far. <laughs> Despite it being their drive, yeah. All right, who do you um, want to oh, look at? So, did you see the star player on the right-hand side of the cage? Uh, there you go. Well, the cage where the ball is. See where the ball is? Yes, that's the, the left. The right-hand side. side of that. Well, oh, that's right. the left-hand side Sorry, and not yeah. the cage. That's there not a star player. It's just, yeah, just a random that's, flesh column. Yeah, it's just, just a flesh column. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um... <laughs> You hear the words I am speaking to you. Well, um, only only I vaguely registering, to be honest, at the yeah, moment. I, okay. I I don't I don't like to be not prepared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Completely unprepared. Using the stand firm here to get the extra hit with frenzy. Um, probably will have to stay again. And the claw does nothing here. It was indeed the mighty blow that did the damage on the previous elf, but that did get rid of a guard elf, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, so when you missed that. Uh, there was a lovely opening move to um, not dazzle a uh, flesh golem, um, which uh, made meant him able to, he was able to get a bunch of hits on the line and be able to get a foul off on one of the flesh golems. The foul unfortunately failed, and the flesh golem who had been hit not dazzled took a, did not like it and decided to take Eldrail to the task, um, knocked him down. He was subsequently fouled and removed from play. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, as a, uh, as would a you mind checking the top corners to see what um, other inducements are in play? Because there doesn't seem. Oh, there so is a wizard in play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and anything else up there? Uh, no. Is there bribe in play as well? Well, that's from the ref area, isn't it? Ah, it's fantastic. Our third it's game in a row stadium, with the referee so area. Ref yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think you'll have to go to the other one and then go back to that one. It just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Cyanide. There it is. So he still has his bribe. That explains very much the uh, the opening foul as well. It was a nice foul and it was well worked. But um, his team has been entirely picked apart and separated. Uh, there are some guys down there who are in big trouble. Um, I still think he's probably going to be able to score, but whether or not he's going to have an intact team at the end of that is uh, anybody's guess. Um, the... There has been a removal for the elves on the necro by getting rid of their big scary guy, uh, the guys on the other side. It's a uh, just a knockout on a mighty blow uh, tackle uh, white. Uh, not mighty blow tackle piling on um, dauntless white at like that. Okay, so so bring, bring me up to speed. It's the it's the elves drive. It's the elves drive, yep. and they were caged in their backfield uh well they they made an amount of space and then decided to back off to do uh to to just get away from where the stuff was managed to get some hits on and rather than try to attack the cage he instead just went down and took apart everything that was in the backfield yeah okay. and now you're pretty much up to date the reason that blitzer that is standing yeah, in the middle of all switch. of those horrible okay. situations was there is because uh he had gone in and removed um uh, with a really nice block um, that he did have to reroll to get into removal. Um, the mighty blow pack piling on tackle white that mm. is over on the left hand side who is knocked out. Um, I would put good money on this being a um, foul, um, <laughs> regardless of the fact that it's been uh, knocked down. He's going to use as many guys as he can spare down there, which are all of his fast players and the dirty player. I'm going to switch you now. Okay. Thanks. Well, that's a pretty nice pow on that guy. Doubt he's staying where he is. He's going to do the dodge out. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's getting yeah, much uh, yeah, benefit traditional from staying there. Wolf jaw dodge. He would, to be no. fair, this is a no. He stays. Uh, to be fair, this is an agility four wolf, so he can oh, kind of yeah. get away with much. That is uh, even more understandable. But it's too yeah, not too. Like, are you even necroing if you don't make him <laughs> blitz with your wolf and then dodge away afterwards? Part of the course. So in comes, as expected, we do have a plus three foul on this guy, who is significantly important. Nothing happens, just a stun, isn't caught. I think Gus is going to be able to take a uh, sigh of relief as a result of that. So, interesting play. A lot of guys still in the backfield that uh, are very, very capable of getting to either sideline. Some really nice uh, use of his speed by um, mm. being able to get that hit on the on the blitzer and the uh, ability to you okay yeah the resolution thing is annoying me okay i might have rather... to restart the game at half time yeah okay that's fine it'll just take well you you seconds. just you don't need to actually move anything around because where it currently is is fine and we'll yeah um, we'll yeah be able to see yeah, yeah. So you, I, you know it's just me to wanting to look anything. at other stuff but it's it's fine <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think the the uh, bit rate seems pretty solid. So cool. Some some improvement in that regard, but this this mm -hmm. uh, resolution on my screen is definitely a <laughs> a step too far. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. I um. That might have been. Um, yeah. It's it's uh, it's not a great idea. So gets the block here, does get rid of that one zombie. I think he was a really nicely worked chain push to be able to get rid of the um, um, werewolf, but uh, had to take the boat down. Um, that's all fine. Uh, will have to take the two plus dodge here. Uh, has the reroll to put into it, so not a huge deal. Uh, will be able to make somewhat of a cage on this side, but I do worry that there are an amount of elves that are just not on the pitch anymore. Hmm. So opting for the screen, here comes Jordel. Agility five does a thing. 
And that's a pretty weak screen, but he's relying on the fact that he's not going to be able to come through the middle. And uh, now I would worry about the agility four and its ability to get through, but again, it's not particularly strong, so I don't think it's still play. Does roll a one. That is on a loner and opts to not re-roll it. Also, it's his last re-roll, so another good reason not to re-roll it. So, do we start with the foul after getting some guys in position, or do we just end the turn with it? I don't think he needs to bring a huge amount of those guys back into play, so he can probably get away with being, with making the foul later by himself without worrying about it. It is a question of how much he decides to commit here. I think the white can come up. Um, and take and stand in front of the wrestle on the left hand side um, and then we'll see the blitz come in somewhere with um, the mighty blow wolf this is a pretty good option to be able to take out Jordel where he has but it will be four dice on him but no wrestle but the mighty blow certainly is uh, something getting four dice on a word answer is never to be turned down especially if you've managed to go mighty blow it as well and then I think, so I think the Flutelitz is going to come in on Jordel here. No. No, he decides to go for the cage instead. He's very anxious to not let him score. Claude does come in. And doesn't do anything. Obviously Claude not doing anything anyway, but... And we'll go for the foul here, I think, first. Yeah, looks like it. Does roll him. And another knockout. This is fantastic news for Gus. That is... Oh, Dirty Player kicks in. Turns it into a proper knockout. Okay. Yeah. No, no so, babe, right? Uh, no babe, no. Um, and the bribe has been used, which was the other risky part of that play, but it was still the correct play. Now that that guy's been removed, he's going to be able to bring some guys in to make sure he can't make any further progress. So they, they both used their bribes? Uh, no, uh, but, uh, Gus has not had an opportunity to, to make any right. uh, yeah, that well make since sense. the initial. Uh, so yeah, so yeah. that's he still has his bride. Oh, here, here is. Well, that. that's quite interesting. Went for the full uh, attrition fireball. So the fireball has hit at least one of them and resulted in another white removal. Let's see if it does any damage to any of the rest of them. Uh, so we can take our time. There's no need to worry about it. Does get the wolf down oh. into an injury, but I think that's okay. I think he's managed to stave it off. There's no cross over that wolf really head, so he manages to, to recover. Good news for Shavide. And the other two have resisted. This has managed to open up enough of a uh, space for him to be able to get through here. He's going to go with the ball blitz. Uh, absolutely fine to do so. Nope, Jordel's going to do it. In comes Jordel, takes the hit on the... Oh, and the boat down isn't really good enough. That is not great news. He's going to have to take it and back off. There's mm, no point in using a reroll on this. I oh, and he re gets the 1 in 81. So and the loner roll has, as well. And the loner roll, yeah. Uh, but he's going to have to back off here. This is not good news for Gus. Uh, absolutely. Um, you burning through all of his inducements here. It is turn 7, and he needs to have some guys in there to score. So I think he's debating whether what he does now. So the jump is still available for him should he decide to leap over this ghoul and uh, get Jordel into a scoring position and then potentially try the 3 plus 3 plus through um, on that angle with the ball carrier. Probably not since the reroll's been used. I don't think that's a viable option anymore. I mean, he can still roll the dice at it, but that'd be that. Uh, so bit of panic stations here. I'm not sure he knows what he's going to do himself. Does have the loner in the bottom field as well, but that guy's got a, mar a, a wolf marking him, so not exactly a great scoring threat as it stands. No, I mean I'm mainly just looking at Jordel's hair. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's it is it's, it's magnificent. It truly is a thing of awesome, mm -hmm. awesome beauty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hard to think about, you know best yeah. odds and strategic yeah. play when you've got he's an absolutely lovely player very very expensive but he is a war dancer with sidestep and diving catch and also you'll notice his agility five is pretty spectacular so doesn't opt to do anything uses the fact that he has sidestep to stay in position this ball carrier is a lineman who is not in an ability does not have an ability to score 
has put him in, is going to have to go for the pass here. There's no other reason for him to be there other than he wants to get surfed. <laughs> so it <laughs> so looks like the pass say. play is going to come in. So here we go. No, just setting up. Ooh. No, he is going to go for the pass oh, and it's... doesn't get anything. Oh, it's a thrower. It's... That would explain it. But... And the ball scatters from him into the guy in front of him. That is mixed blessings, although he can get guarded. Is on a wrestle catcher. And the catch there, four plus required. It's not a catcher, it's just a lineman. It was the five it was the five five up throw, I think. Pass, uh, I think. correct. Yeah, that, that double one. The catch there and requiring a four plus tells me that that wrestle guy is a lineman and not in fact a catcher had it been a catcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. With nerves of steel that would have been a three plus catch required. Comes in, gets the hit, does get the <laughs> Another removal. removal. <laughs> Down goes the wrestle lineman. And ball scatters pretty well. This is not bad news. And uh, that thrower can pick up the ball, walk into contact and hand that to Jordel, who being agility five and having diving tackle and being in only two tackle zones will catch that ball on a two plus. <laughs> uh, it being a, an automatically um, successful, an automatically accurate pass is what a handoff is treated as and diving tackle adding one to successful passes and agility five ignoring tackle. So it looks like we've got a two, two, two to score. But we do have the um, uh, blitz still coming. And here's the blitz. Coming in on this guy to see if he can get him. Looks like he's going to go for the full surf. And does get the surf, even on the one dice. Out goes the thrower. Thrower is fine. Crowder happy enough with him already having made a fool of himself by snaking the pass. <laughs> and I think he's going to stay there to make this slightly harder. I don't think Jordel is in a position to both come back and go forward. So I think we're going to just make this as hard a thing as he can do he can pick up on possible and he's just managed to get in on another player okay this isn't the end of the world so he's gonna have to bring in the foul on that guy he's just decided to stand next to which is fine there is still the option available of that wrestle to be able to come in one dice hit that right hit that goal go for the wrestle jordel can get out and pick up the ball hoping it doesn't get onto any of the other tackle zones or a scatter catch uh, get the ball, jump out, and pass it to the loner in the thing. So there's definitely a play available. Uh, it's not a good play, but it's a play. So yeah, it's the only play available, I think. You're going to have to take the two plus in, one dice, doesn't get it, hasn't got a reroll. We'll push it into Jordel. Jordel has the option to, if he doesn't follow, move up one more. No, he's just abandoned it. He's just going to see if he can get Jordel to safety and rely on the fact that Chibiere doesn't have anything in, in, in uh, scoring range. So probably best to move the uh, loner out of the end zone <laughs> so that he doesn't get surfed first and it requires no dice roll. Is there anything in then range get to the surf him? Jordel jump. I don't think there's hmm? anything. There's nothing in range to surf him now, is there? There is. Uh, well, yes, the wolf is moving. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Does go for the jump. Uh, and does get that guy out of range and put it protects yep. Rodell. Yeah. So fair enough. Uh, was right to bail on that as soon as it didn't work out. Um, bit of a shame for um, both of them that are well. Shame for uh, Thanatos not being able to score this drive, but the fact that uh, he was able to stop Shavide scoring is also a bit of a problem. Big problem here when not having scored scored in turn eight is the fact that there's only going to be one set of KO rolls, and it might work in his favour, but it of course might not. He does have a lot of KO rolls to take, whereas we'll put the reroll in. Yeah, definitely. Does get the down. See if he gets the injury. If not, we're going to see a foul. The KO means it's not going to be a foul. That's probably That's mixed use for Tanitos. A lot of KO rolls. A lot of KO. Rolls. Five. Yes. Uh, five by the look of it, yeah, and three actual injuries, which isn't terrible, 
but it's certainly not good. I don't think any of us thought this game was going to go to overtime. Um, <laughs> but we have to bear in mind that despite it not being his drive, despite him not being able to get any extra um, SPP or any um, uh, score off this drive, he also has managed to... <laughs> Uh, sorry, laughing at the, uh, the the target of the throw was rather funny. Um, has decided to um, use his wizard to see if he could get out of a bad... Oh, both of the whites, they knocked out! That's pretty huge! Oh, no! <gasps> and all five of them failed. That's Good cool. lord, ladies and gentlemen, that... we had seven four pluses ah, all of them failed. That's absolute the heartbreaking yeah that is uh wow okay so yeah 150k on the wizard uh 200k on eldril and both of those have been used in the first drive without a score uh, normally and you will hear me say this again and again that having eldril and a wizard on an elven team guarantees you one score <laughs> and there you go as with any advice you ever hear in blood bowl should always replace the word always with sometimes sometimes take block first every time correct yeah uh, sometimes carry is never around <laughs> yeah uh that is horrible just yeah, it's pretty, just, it's just, pretty for, rough. just for venator alone am i right in thinking yeah. that's a three percent chance to fail five fours uh Oh, I can't imagine it's as bad as all of that. Uh, I think it's well. I mean, really, they're 50 to 25, so it's the chain. The chain is the issue. So it's a fifty-fifty by by five. So yeah, it is. It's very very unlikely to to all. I mean, you know, you'd hope to mm -hmm. get a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so well, out of five, you should get two or three, right? Yeah, you should get two or three. Yeah. So simple. That's that's the better maths as opposed to trying to work it into a chain because each one of them is its own way. Yeah. Uh, so five elves. Uh, five elves, yeah, five including elves. Jordan Freshbreeze, lest we forget. Mm -hmm. I mean, admittedly, three of them are shitty loners, but that's not important right now. What is important is that he's got Jordan Freshbreeze, and there are no whites on the pitch. So, yeah, Jordan can win a game. I think he's going to have to be. Yeah, I don't think he can be this. Uh, standoffish. I think he's going to have to be able to, because if a blitz happens now, it's of no real use to him. Mm. Whereas if he manages to put those guys somewhere in the center of the, pay, the pitch, yeah, they might get hit a bit, but they will be in a position to just go and score. So I think it's going to be an interesting one to decide. He does decide to uh, keep them safe. I think, um, I think in a situation like this, he might have to be a little bit more aggressive. Shabibi certainly has no intention of scoring until turn 16. He wins on wins it by scoring on turn 16. Well, he doesn't. There will be the option of a one-turner. But uh, definitely you think that the if the game wasn't already in the um, Necromantic's favour, uh, 5 out of 5 KO rolls not coming back means that, uh, despite him not getting to, to certainly means that the game is definitely in uh, the favour of the Night of the Loving Dead. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, all Manzing on the line. This will be interesting. P. Diddy isn't going to matter much. He's just going to be able to rearrange some of the guys on the line of scrimmage to make sure that they don't get his hit as often. I think he probably brings them all across so that they're all in front of one of the wolves, make him have to blitz with one of them, make him see if he can have to tie down some of his guard. Um, yeah top one there's not a huge amount of good places here the problem with the spread out defense but I think that's probably the best of it uh, he's still going to get a couple of hits off because there is still guard there but certainly not as many as he could have been hit mm, he's not going to be able to shuffle them up and down the line oh and has gone to decide to decide to bring those guys up as well that's very interesting so he's actually yeah. refused flank which is very good play I think this is very clever so with Jordel on the inside and his sidestep, it does mean that he's not going to be in a position to get tied down. But he's gone to the opposite side of the field to where the ball is in play. So he's allowing him the opportunity of taking some space on the left-hand side, 
but remember he's going to be able to <laughs> use and he's decided to go on the side of the ball instead so he's going so I full, think he might have to swap the guys on. in the center if he's going to do this he's going to have to bring the central line over as well because at the moment he's just giving hits on everybody if he overflows one of the sides yeah then then he's going to be able to tie up and at least keep one of the flesh golems some of the guard and one of the wolves out of the fight immediately so I think this is better so he's got kind of so I guess hoping maybe the, he gets a one in nine uh, drop the ball yeah indeed yeah and just to see if he can maximize the amount of uh, um, of effect his small number of guys can have uh, in the play I think that's quite clever Yeah, I mean, so we saw we get... saw a very small number of of skinks um, in the lizard man game. Yes. Uh, not Chocoholics's, but the other lizard man game, Scroffy uh, Yes, the Yeah, the no snakes here. Exactly, achieve a huge yeah. amount with what seemed like very few players on the floor. You know. Well, indeed, yeah, he had three players left at the end of the game and still managed to pull out the two nil win. Um, three nil. Or 2 1, I can't remember. I think the win it was anyway. 2 1. I think it was 2 1. Yeah. But, um, yeah, these three dice are pretty scary. The three dice from a ghoul right there. So it doesn't have the angle to feed it into the. Um, just the stun. That is two from two stuns. And we do have one of the wolves free. So the guard is all pretty tied up in the center. I think we're going to see the wolf blitz here come around and take some hits on. Um, absolute madness to try to go at the sidestepper with your frenzy wolf, uh, regardless of uh, any other positioning you can do here. I think he's just going to want to clear out that line, that uh, lineman. Oh, he's going for the dirty player blitz. <laughs> oh, and he went for it on. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, okay. And keeps him trapped in the center. Still a two plus out, regardless of what way he decides to do it. He's going to have to bring Wolf over there to cover where he would go. But I suppose working out exactly where Jordell is, is a pretty good option when you can decide then whether or not you're going to force him into the dodge or the, the leap. And it looks like he's forced him into the leap. Sure hands is a good skill to give a ghoul. And he goes as far away as he can, making sure that he can't be dealt with by Jordel. And it's going to be a tricky proposition for him to get any of his remaining, um, well, his three three elves that he has left into any good position. Jordel immediately going in for the leap, immediately going in to bring some pressure on down on the ghoul. Uh, of course, being the same move as that wolf, he is not in any way out of range of it. Uh, him having started a square ahead of it. See if he can get anything else in play here. Yeah, uh, it does go for the tough dodge. There's no reason to reroll out. It's a four plus on a loner. Just take it. Okay. So nice minimal turn. Two one stuns. Still has his five elves. This is pretty good <laughs> considering the starting situation he was in. Oh, absolutely. Cordell Jordelli is open for some uh, abuse here, but not a huge amount. Um, we'll bring the wolf down to cover. Once it gets his fast pieces all together, wants to get some slow pieces that have some guard at the front. All of this making perfect sense. It's going to be very difficult to get any of his other players around to Ooh. make Ooh, instant uh, GFI there. Cyanide pathing, I believe. Uh, does get it on the reroll. Uh, yeah, that's um, that was interesting. We came around from the one, two, three, four. Yeah, no, it was just a GFI. Rare mistake by uh, Shibide, just taking that immediately. Not having calculated it in, I think. We do send the other flesh golem back to secure the front of the cage. And we have guard on only two of these corners, but I don't suppose it matters really when the only cage is the only part of the cage that you can get the leap in from. Are the parts where you can't cancel both assists so it doesn't matter that we don't have the extras here and the wolf decides to go for a blitz on the thrower block is a skill 
that people should take. Stomps the frenzy for the second hit, and this is all pretty good. Uh, he's going to come in for a foul here. It's going to be not a huge amount of assists. It is a dirty player, and it is only armor seven, but I'm not sure it's necessarily worth it for giving up the position. No, he's not. And it looks like Shavide agrees with me on that. Yeah. He was concerned about the, you know, the sneaky roll the dice elf um, quick score to get get another KO roll and. Yeah, and make it, and even though you know, and and maybe he can try to keep him to a to a draw and overtime. Although you well, don't really want, you want so. to win in main. Yeah. He wants to win in normal time. He is going to take his time to score this anyway. Uh, the next couple of turns are pretty important, though. Uh, you have to be think that Thanatos is feeling pretty good about the fact that he started this half with five elves and still, still oh, and there's a loner dodge fail in the two plus. Doesn't re-roll it, and that's that. And this does look like he's going to be able to get quite an amount of forward progress here and manage to get the ball safe, leaving um, Jordel with a bit of work, more work to do than he might have liked. Uh, very unfortunate to have failed his first of the two pluses. Um, oh, and it looks like Shabila might even be planning on scoring Flesh Golem. What was uh, If that hadn't happened, was he going to try to cage dive with... with uh, I think he was going to work out how many of his elves he could have gotten out, how much he could get in front of where the cage was, mm. um, and ideally try to separate the cage that was existent with the two forward guys um, and the flesh golem. So uh, now that that's kind of fallen apart, he's going to be able to pick apart what he needs to pick apart as soon as, when, if and when he wants. And now we've definitely got a foul coming in on that one. <laughs> yep. Used his bribe, so I think the... Um, yeah, I think the wrestle's going to have to come over and cut. No, he's gone to there. That's, that, that makes a lot more sense. So, wrestle will take the corner there. Doesn't need to protect the first corner because there's nothing that can get around there. And the wolf makes sure that he blitzes in the correct direction in order to keep that side as far back as possible. Mighty Blow coming in yet again. And doesn't do anything. In fact, uh, neither Mighty Blow nor Claw were used in the making of this stun. And does manage to get back across. Got to get the run up. This is a all day. Well, you got to make the run up. What it's all about. Run up. And that is a stunned elf. That is fantastic news again. Still has five elves. Uh, admittedly, only two of them are standing. <laughs> so a tough call. I'm not sure what you can do. There's only so much Jordel can do. Jordel cannot even make that cage by the look of it, can he? You click on Jordel, you might if you might be able to. So no, he can just make the side of the cage, but can't make a blitz on it. So. Probably not even worth bringing him up to do anything else. He can sideline and stay away from the majority of these guys because zombies are only move four. Uh, it does risk getting um, at least based, but it's not a particularly big problem for a guy with agility five dodge and leap. Uh, could be an issue if he decides to do so. Um, with enough GFIs, Shibita probably has enough players to still surf him despite him having sidestep. So, going to be tricky to see how he can play him, how he can get him back into the action. Plus, for the loner blitz, he wants to make sure he can get this guy free. Very clever. Make him have to reorganize his things if he wants to get anything out of it. Can bring that guy out, and now, the, now that he's created the space, he's going to be able to bring Jordel inside him and stop him from being able to get served. While also being able to bring Jordel into a position to affect whatever happens next. I think it did look, oh, didn't bring him down very far. I'm not sure about that. I think he's going to have to see if he can pressure the score a bit more and instead decides to bring him all the way back and out of any harm's way. I think he's willing to just lie down and wait for the one turn by the look of this. I mean, he's a very good chance of being able to do it because he is pro elves and does have the right players to do it. Um, but it does give Shavide all of the time in the world and I can almost guarantee he's going to put this ball on that flesh golem because uh, uh -huh. turning down Flesh Golem SPP in a situation like this is pure madness. Uh, if you can get SPP on the Flesh Golems, hey, they're ridiculously hard to level. Uh, once they have block, obviously, they get a lot better because they do punch quite a lot. 
Um, block and guard is about all you need, but if you can manage to get the one point that he needs to get mighty blow, that guy can go turn from being a, a fantastic player into an absolutely incredible one. Flesh Golden is one of the best pieces in the game, positional-wise. Have all of the skills that you don't want until they're level three, and then they have all of the skills you want at level three that you would normally wait and hope that you got on a level five black work. All you need in the black and guard, coming with regen, stand firm, pick skull, just an incredible player. Um, quite cheap too, but not in a cheap roster. You do have to play it necromantic to get them. So here comes the handoff. Doesn't get the 4 plus. I don't think he bothers rerolling this. Rerolls are pricey. It's not like the ball is in any danger. He can just go for the 4 plus pickup next turn. And indeed, he has four turns to do this 4 plus pickup, which at the end of the day, if he doesn't do in four turns, he can just use the sure hands goal to go and score. So this is the problem with not having brought Dordell down at all, is he is effectively not involved in the rest of this drive. Uh, he has got all of his pieces back and unstunned, however, so being able to get all of them to just dodge away, make it more difficult, and definitely have at least two elves for the start of the next drive is going to be permanent. So, does stand up. I think there's going to be a dodge here. Oh, he keeps yeah, failing. Yeah, fills his two roll. plus dodge. Yeah, and he's not going to reroll it because it's a loner. Would be a waste. And uh, manages to knock itself out. So, uh, Thanatos doing for Shivite, what Shivite isn't able to do, and remove elves. Perhaps, perhaps. All knockouts, though. Yeah. Them all being knockouts is pretty big deal. Let's take the power on this guy. Does manage to stun. Good lord, he hasn't, he hasn't managed not to stun <laughs> or remove anything. And, of course, this was already set up last turn for the foul. We're going to make sure that this one counts by bringing in as many assists as we can. Uh, no need to worry about uh, anything else. And, indeed, can go <laughs> see if he can send a flesh golem to try to hunt down <laughs> one of the fastest things in the game with Blodge. But, hey, if he keeps rolling ones on these uh, immediate dodges, maybe he'll have an opportunity. It's God. like it's like the Blood Bowl version of the hunt for Red October. <laughs> it's like <laughs> an old Russian sub <laughs> yep. lumbering through the waters. Well, that's rowdy. Bringing back the sure hands to, ins <laughs> to ensure the thing as well. He's got, Didn't even he's go got, for the pickup first. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, an auto breaks armor, <laughs> and only a stun on a five goes for the four plus pickup. Flash Gollum goes, <laughs> and the ball is not in his. You'd expect him to get it next turn. For sure. Hard time's the charm. But going to be a pretty uneventful turn for the elves, what with two of them being stunned and one of them being <laughs> on the other side of the pitch. Now, he's going to have to work out how he can actually hide here. I think he <laughs> needs to be approximately seven squares away from the thing, and that's exactly what he does. Yep. Cannot be hit there. Can be based. It's the correct distance because it can force him into Jibble GFIs to base him, which would do absolutely nothing. And should he decide to move four squares to that side to uh, do some damage to him, um, he's just going to be able to retreat to the other side and make sure he's not in range again. <laughs> it's so, you know he's what, going it, for it. It's uh, it's the Mike Myers is the it's the Halloween remake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goes for the pickup first. Flash Goller remembers what picking up the ball was like when back when he was alive. And uh, puts on his linebacker top. Picks up the ball. Maybe he was a center. Um, no need to move anything else. In comes the foul. With the dirty player. It wasn't with the dirty player, was it? Sending Let's off. get the KO. Oh, it was the dirty player. It was the dirty player. And Gorgeous gets sent off. That's a big removal. But that guy has certainly earned his uh, points this game by the removal of Eldritch Sidewinder at the start. Now safe from any retaliation when seven... Uh... Yeah. 
<laughs> Pro Elvis wake up. Mm hmm. Loving the wang. <laughs> you um, never know. Yep. Yeah. Is in range of a blitz here. So. Yeah. <laughs> the dodge is a 2 plus failed again. Oh, uh, no, was it was a 3 plus this yeah. time. So, I mean, that's totally. Good lord, man. You're an elf. You're supposed to, I mean, how is anybody ever going to hire that man to play on their team? They can't do the most basic. So, turn 15, he doesn't want to score. He can fix one more uh, one more foul in here. And then mm -hmm. it's pretty much just down to whether or not he can get the uh, KOs back. Uh, as it stands, Shivide has two stand firm players that he can put on the line. Uh, making the one turn very, very difficult. But... It's only two of them, and two of them make it very difficult. They don't make it impossible. So we'll bring the wolf back. We'll bring this other guy back to make the foul. So the wolf comes and hides in the little gap he's made. Fantastic. And we'll bring this guy back to do the foul. That is a one, two, Ooh, three, first. four, five, six. Oh. Gets the power. Gets the full power. Oh, oh. Uh, he's, and it's not even a stun. He's got plot armor. Uh, well, that's something at least. And in comes the foul. This is plus six, so automatic armor break. Just rolling on the injury. No dirty player to affect the injury roll. And it's a 7, which isn't an 8. Dirty player would have knocked him out. But the 7 isn't enough to do anything better than the stun lobby. And thus ends turn 15. So, up gets Jordel, runs away. I see no reason for him not to. Well, he could just stay where he is. There's no zombie and... to foul. There's no zombie to foul. If he wants to foul him, he's going to have to foul him with... Oh, some, a wolf uh, or a golem. Or a ghoul. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a, there's, mean, a, there's a wrestle ghoul. There's a wrestle ghoul that can do it and probably would do it. So yeah. yeah. It's not worth it. Not when you can 2 plus re-roll away. Uh, he's got sidestep there. He is going to take a mighty blow wolf to the face, but there was no getting past that. Absolutely. I'm Cathra. I think Jordale's hair... Mm -hmm. so, you know, complete makes him completely immune to all damage. <laughs> right. Hmm. Interesting. The other wolf. Oh my god. Okay. There's yep. The just straight the in for the score. The uh, not often seen Gollum victory dance. It's such a great dance. <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. The man's been working for years in the back of a bog trying to learn how to do that. <laughs> golem, 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 I made you out of clay. Golem, 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 my enemies you must slay. There you go. I had a... Uh, made an Irish named not bad three that's not terrible that's not terrible no let's see what we got let's see if we got some players though how many catchers we got so we do have agility man we do not have any catchers one catcher is out there's no more catchers there's no catchers there's no catchers on the pitch okay. oh I tell a lie uh, top right is a catcher yeah yeah movement okay. seven movement seven catcher so I think the best opportunity for him to score here is going to be on his agility, lad. So I think you find the ball and uh, pass it through. Actually, no, it isn't. The agility lad's going to have to fetch, and Jordel's going to have to be the man that gets the pushes and hits. But this is going to be a very solid um, one-turn defense put in from Shavide, uh, with the guys being where they are. Yeah, I think... Ooh, well, I think the leap in is going to be the best option to get some hits off, and that's going to be very tricky to get any hits off. 
So we may just see him decide that his best opportunity is, in fact, to um, hold for the riot. But I don't think that's good enough. I think you have to just go for this. So he is putting the guys in position to get the push on L on uh, Jordel. Um, he's going to have to dodge into a pretty risky square to get that hit off. And this is the point I was making a second ago. I think he'd be better off using the sidestep Blitzer, Blitzer who's as good at scoring, um, and using Jordel to do the leap attack in to get the initial push so that he can get it going. It is three guys with guard on the line. Get any punches on these guys. It's going to be start. The first hit is going to start off with three dice uphill. Uh, is this three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Yes, it is. Uh, and he needs somebody at the back of the pitch to uh, pick up the ball. That's Mr. Block on the second line is the uh, is is the thrower. So he's going to have to go back. Uh, because currently he doesn't have anybody who's able to go and do it. And I think he's realizing now, as I am, that he does not have enough players to do this. I, it's been a while since I remember watching K Frog's video series. I thought seven was the minimum, but um, maybe. It depends on the movements you have, and right. it depends on other skills that you have. Yeah. And that is not going to help him in any way to get this. And I think that's GG. Yep. So, is he going to do anything, or is he just going to call it and leave it at that? You might see if he can get some punches off. I'm sure that they're having a bit of a chat in chat to say, well done, well played, you got unlucky, etc., etc. Bear in mind, Shibide's, um, Shibide's, one of his uh, lads did not wake up for the entire game either, but obviously it had a lot less of an impact. So, we're just going to go for a straight blitz on a kick guy. See if we can get rid of an annoying piece. Doesn't get it. Goes for the reroll. Does get it. Does get and it. And an injury. So, uh, but it's a regen. So doesn't actually count. But certainly makes his hall of star players look a little bit better. With him having got a whopping uh, four instead of uh, <laughs> uh, four SPP instead of none. Or two, I should say. So yeah, good game. Uh, one dice on the flashy isn't good enough. Number two, not doing what he wants. And he gets the one dice after using it with Jordel, who gets stunned. And that's all she wrote, folks. What a rough game for poor old Thanatos. Had the inducements, had the ability to make a game of it. The dice just really weren't with him. His dodges were pretty appalling. And the overwhelming and obviously fantastic, uh, well placed positional play by Shibi Day, uh, making sure that he manages to get through the next round. So, congratulations to Shibi Day and commiserations to Thanatos. Uh, best of luck next season. And we have all of our final, our, all of our second rounders, which is pretty exciting, my good friend Sylvan. Yeah, um, I was thinking about putting together a little graphic that's a bit more <laughs> visually pleasing. Uh, There's actually, than... if you look at it on the Spike page, it actually has a quite a pleasing... Um... Oh, yeah, well... That, yeah, hang on, and I'll send you the uh, link directly. Lovely. Because um, I can take a screenshot of that and put it up on the screen. Uh, yeah, uh, here we go. Uh, is it this page? It is not. Is it this page? Welcome to chat, page? Thanatos. Commiserations. Ah, he's in the stream chat, I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah, he's just joined the stream chat. And here we go. So just... Uh, um, hard luck, Gus. Uh, rough game. Um, yeah, those knockouts, man. Good Lord, that was... Uh, that was not There we go. I just sent it in your Discord there. So you should be able to click on that and it'll bring up a, uh, a pleasing little graphic. Uh, it certainly wasn't too shambolic. I think um, 
I mean, don't sell yourself short at all. Um, you did all of the right things in all of the right order. There was some really nice plays when you did do plays. That was the thing to get through. Um, I think the separation of your team at the start was um, uh, well executed by Shavide to manage to keep them all apart. Um, and he was able to pick you apart at his, at his will, um, which is just very, very unfortunate. Them all being knockouts put you in a really good position for the second drive, though. And then five out of five, man. Good Lord. Uh, yeah, quite right, uh, Alan, pointing out that the, the dodge is there, man. Uh, how many of the those loners just don't want to get hired, man? They just couldn't roll a two or a three to save their lives. Well, you know, in some cases, quite literally. Um, Eldrill going down so early as well. Ouchie wow wah um, But yeah. Um, the chaos were just ridiculous. It was he, neither of his came back either, so it was seven out of seven fails. It's just incredible. Um, but she, so don't feel bad about it, buddy. Uh, I think you did uh, pretty well overall. You got that graphic? Yeah, I'm just I'm just loading it into OBS now. Ah, fantastic, cool. Um, yeah, uh, I think I mean in terms of how you played, etc. I you know you can watch back the vid, but as I said, I think you were doing all of the right things at all the right times. I wasn't sure if when you had decided to, you managed to get one of the guys off the uh, floor and uh, make a nice blitz to make him have to reposition to get the foul with the one dice to push out the guy who had been fouled the previous turn and managed to get over onto the left-hand side of the pitch. Um, if you had brought up Jordel there, uh, the, sta the stand that you had and the position that you had there meant that Jordel on the inside of him uh, he, he didn't have enough players to get across to surf him. So if you were going to bring him back up, I think that might have been the, uh, the, the turn. Oh, fantastic. Okay, and I have the go. graphic up. Um, let yeah. me just stream, because obviously I'm going to stop streaming the game in Discord. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I will instead share that picture, which you probably have on your screen anyway. Uh, I do because I'm yeah. looking at it. Oh, we can talk. I can see. Yeah. I can see. No, that's my cursor. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, let's have a little chat about the quarterfinals then. Yeah. So uh, pretty exciting um, quarterfinals. Uh, first, let me say. Uh, well, I can't speak for my own game, but overall, it's been an absolutely uh, brilliant opening round. I thought it was really, really exciting. Um, there were some really great games that Blood Bowl played. So well done to everybody. Uh, commiserations to those who didn't manage to make it through to the quarters. But uh, getting through to the last 16 is special. Special note of mention of the fact that I think two of the more exciting games were um, with guys who are only uh, in this for one season so far, coming up against uh, guys who've been in, in it for three or two. Um, so well done to those guys for putting up a really good showing and showing what the power of inducements can do. Uh, you certainly made games out of both those games, so well done. Um, uh, yes, uh, it was really, really difficult. I was curious as to whether you would have decided to bring in, and you'll see this back in the VOD, uh, so I'm responding to, uh, I was half hoping to save Jordel for the one turn, the last turn, but was missing one dude to try it. Uh, yeah, one more dude would have made it available, but uh, I think you needed to use Jordel as well to do the jump in and hit. Uh, the leap in would have been better than the dodging with your agility 5 and you could have swapped to using the agility 5 to actually do the score but I think you probably realised that yourself and uh, decided that it wasn't worth it uh, the problem with sending Jordel in the leap in there is that the initial hit is going to be 3 dice uphill and uh, looking for a pow or looking for a push and uh, I mean you're looking for you're looking for a very specific set of dice um, in order for him to just go, cool, I'll take the pow, cool, I'll take the both down, cool, I'll take the skull, and thus ends the one turn. Uh, it was an option, and if that's the way it is, you got to do it. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was a 0. 0.00001 play. But, you know, if that's the play, that's the way you got to do it. Uh, but like you said, uh, you were shy one guy. You needed one more player to, to, to even do it. So I think setting up for the riot was probably your better option. Uh, riot or... Uh, yeah, riot or bust, really. Okay, sorry, I beg your pardon, should be uh, uh, still on. Let's get back to this. So, yeah, uh, in the top quarter final, we have PK83 with his dwarves versus Shavile, 
and his uh, necromantic Shavili just after getting a level from that game as well on one of his uh, flesh golems. I think with the without that being strength um, or a double, he'll take the dodge on the double because it will make that guy an absolute beast. Because bludge, bludge, stand firm guard is the dream. Uh, if he takes strength, obviously he'll take it. Otherwise, I think that's going to be a mighty blow all day, uh, giving him another another bit of teeth um, and a very very nice flesh golem with that. Um, and certainly the mighty blow there is going to help. Uh, considerably against uh, PK83 and his dwarfs. Uh, PK83 uh, had a very, very nice game and did do very well against the High Elves. Did manage to score on a beard to make in the last action of the game to make it a 2 0 victory. Um, it's a very, very nice team. You guys did meet um, earlier in the um, championship, however, in, in Division 1, and was a very, very, very well fought 2 1 win to Shavite. Um, obviously, the teams have changed considerably since then. I believe Kavide's team value is now more than his, which it was not at the time. Uh, I think he was still able to induce some bribes and whatnot. I think he may even have had Cheney for the game. But since then, his one of his was after getting considerably better, since it was a movement bust. P Wolf at the time has been replaced by a wolf with block and proper movement, and the other wolf with the agility has gone from just having agility to having block and mighty blow, making him an absolute terror for the dwarves. So I think that's going to be uh, certainly something that uh, PK83 will be worried about. Uh, having said that, it's a really nice dwarf team. It's certainly the best dwarf team out of all of the dwarf teams in the divisions, which is why it's here in the, in the cup. So it's certainly not going to be a bad game for him. I think he'll fancy his chances, and with good rights, he's managed to get uh, Shibile's number, I think. Um, it's one of the things about having played the guy once or twice. You kind of get an idea for how he plays overall. And if you want an example of how he plays, it's correctly. <laughs> so, that's going to be a fantastic game. That's game one. We've got Shibile versus PK83. Uh, on that side of the bracket, in the next game, we have Saigurai, whose um, Amazons pushed the Lizards out of the competition in the game last night. Versus Crowdog, uh, whose High Elves versus the Necromantic was the first of the cup games that we watched and streamed here. Um, this is going to be a really, really exciting game. Uh, Crowdog is down quite a bit of uh, TV from his win against the Necromantic uh, being piloted by Unforgiven Merle. Uh, I've never asked him if it's because he's Irish or because it's in real life he's Unforgiven. Um, so uh, he managed to do some damage to the High Elves, uh, so he is missing a block uh, lineman, and he's also missing one of his Agility 5 Dauntless um, Tackle uh, Blitzers, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, as Shavili and I were assuming last night, there's a couple of options he has available to him with the uh, inducements overall. He does have about 300k. We were des deciding whether... He decides to go, we think that he'll definitely take a wizard to start, which will leave him with 150. And with that 150 and the little bit of money he has that he's allowed spend, because we have the 40 min, 40 cap on the amount of money that you can spend from your own treasury in the cups, uh, the fair play rule uh, are in play. So uh, we think that he has the option to either go the traditional Apple Babe, um, or could indeed decide to induce a tackle blitzer with that 150 he actually costs 180 but he can afford that within his 190 budget uh, another block piece would be very very useful considering he's down quite a lot and the uh, introduction of tackle against an amazonian team could make it very very worthwhile it is an elf that's induced and it does cost a lot of money uh, but it is tackle and he is playing amazons uh, we also had good the Amazons played last night. It's going to be a very, very tough game for um, uh, Crowdog. But uh, Crowdog knows what he's doing. This isn't his first rodeo. Uh, he did very, very well to get through. Um, Unforgiven and the Necromantic in the first round. Uh, so, again, a very, very tough game. And I'm not really sure I would like to call that. Coming up in round three, on the other side of the bracket... We have yours truly versus Will Walsh. Uh, Will Walsh in the game on Saturday that we watched played his orcs, the orc hard thieves, 
versus Home Slice and the Phillipsburg Pirates in the form of Fisk Shorfs, uh, did manage to get quite a good win there. Uh, two, ni- two nil win, in fact. Uh, probably not the most exciting game of Blood Bowl we watched over the weekend. There were certainly some plays put into it by both of the uh, coaches. Um, I think this uh, is going to be a tough game for both Willie and I. Uh, we've played each other quite a lot over the last year or so. And Willie has managed to come out on top in most of those games. Um, however, earlier this season, we did play off this exact game uh, with his Orcs uh, having gone down 3-1 to my um, Dark Elves. But that isn't to give you a proper uh, uh, insight into what's going to happen in this uh, this next game. Uh, I think I'd better leave it to other people to make comments on, on what's going to happen there. I don't know. I think it's going to be too close to call. And I think that game is going to be on Wednesday night. Uh, last game of the round of uh, of the thing, then we have Jetty Bear and his Norse after making absolute paper of um, Minion for Hire's dwarf and armor uh, up against Scrofula and his team, which has recovered, uh, didn't actually take any lasting damage despite having gone down to three lizards on the pitch at the end of his two nil defeat or two one win versus Sirens and his Chaos. Uh, very tough game. We watched that. We thought it was very well played by both sides. Uh, Scrofula managing to bag the win at the end um, and making it through to the next round. I um, think this is going to be a very, very interesting game. Jetty Bear's team is scary. Uh, Scrofula's team is very scary. Uh, coming up against Strength 5, coming up against a lot of guards, Coming up against a veteran co- lizard coach, uh, I think this is going to be really, really, really fun. And I think might actually be one of the most more exciting games of this round. And that's about it for those. So uh, we have Shavita in the chat. Uh, yeah, dicing. Um, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, your two KOs didn't come back in either. Good lord, those 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 linemen did not roll punches to save their lives. Um. And now, I wouldn't talk down about yourself, Thanatos. As I said earlier, I think you played really well. I think you did all the right things. There were very few options left available to you, and you took all of the right decisions, I believe. Um, saw everything I saw, and um, I think you played really, really well. So uh, don't give yourself any, uh, any any bad times about it. Uh, I think it was a really, really good game. It should be they just you know, did everything by the numbers as per usual. Uh, all the positioning was all done correctly. But uh, there was no need, after this dicing, there was absolutely no need for him to actually take out a penis and rub it in your face by uh, scoring on a on a flesh column <laughs> to uh, just rub it in. Uh, there was no need for that type of stuff at all, should be there. Uh, that's just toxic, and this is why nobody likes you. <laughs> well, <laughs> on that bombshell. On that, on that lovely note. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can no, wait was, for Jack to have heard all of what I just said now as well. It was a uh, oh, he got a plus strength. Oh no way! Uh, he did get it. He did get it. I that, did say it was if there was nothing. There was not. I said you take dodge because dodge is the dream. Would take strength, uh, but you wouldn't take any other stat. And obviously, you take money blow. Yeah, you're taking strength, hey, man, all day. That's amazing. Uh, PK eighty three is not going to be happy about that. Although he does have two exceptionally good. Um, mighty blow piling on, tackle, one is stand firm, um, uh, slayers. So, he's got yeah, dauntless that, as well, hasn't he? Go so, from a, yeah, going from a, the dauntless hit going from a uh, two plus to a three plus is uh, is sizable. Mm. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. I really dislike diving tackle on flesh columns. I get it, but I just don't like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure they take dodge. Blood firm is the, blood firm is the dream man. Um. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. No. You're taking strength. Like you're obviously taking strength. I don't think any of us are thinking you're doing literally anything else than taking strength. Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Even Alan knows. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think we're done for the evening. Uh, very well played, Shvide. Very well played, Thanatos. Um, unlucky. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, unlucky. Um, Thanatos. Uh, dude, you did super well for one season. Um, that was a really, really good team. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of you play uh, next year in the higher divisions. And uh, I'm 
super excited about it. If uh, I can only hope that I'm good enough to be able to uh, stay up there and play with you regularly. Uh, playing against good people makes us all better, and that's what the Air Global League is all about. It's about making the um, quality of players country really, really good. So um, the more we can play and the more we play against each other, the better we get. So well done, Air Thanks, well Caelan. Uh, thank you so much, Sylvan. Uh, a fast and, and and also breeze. nice to have a fast and breezy game. I feel a little bit more recovered from yesterday. <laughs> Certainly did go fast, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, cheers, all. Uh, we'll be all back right. um, in the coming days for the quarterfinal matchups. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so as soon as we have an idea of when all the games are, we'll be able to post them in the Discord and we'll be able to give you a uh, list of when they're going to be on and whether we're streaming it and who, which lovely voice will be in here, uh, annoying Sylvan, when we do so. <laughs> All right. Cheerio, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. Well done again, guys. Bye.